Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another ranking video thanks for coming back to the channel really appreciate you now it's been a month or two since I did one but we're doing another game of the year ranking and you might be going wait the game awards was like a month or two ago why are you ranking all the games of the year now well it's actually the dice game of the year awards that are coming up soon now dice has been around a lot longer than Jeff Keighley's show and a lot of people consider these the true game awards. It's often referred to in the industry as the equivalent of the Academy Awards, to give a comparison. A lot of people consider this a lot more legit than Jeff Keighley's show, which is very heavy and just straight up reliant on advertisements, promotions, new game announcements, trailers, and is much less about the awards, especially at this point where award recipients were getting like 45 seconds to speak. This is very much just about the awards, and it really is about celebrating the industry and recognizing games games or individuals or development teams that have quote contributed to the advancement of the multi-billion dollar worldwide entertainment software industry end quote. It should also be worth noting that it's not just known as the DICE Awards but the annual Interactive Achievement Awards as well. If you couldn't tell what I'm trying to say here, it's a little bit more legit than Geoff's show. They've been going on since 1998. They're about to do their 27th annual DICE Awards. And to celebrate that, I thought I would rank all of the games that have won their game of the year. So yeah, we're going to be ranking 27 games from worst to best. But there's not a bad game on here. And a lot of these games, in fact, almost all of these games really are some of the greatest pieces of media ever created. No hyperbole. Almost all of these games are exceptional. And this really is just kind of a personal ranking. All of these games are great and I have no problem recommending all of them to anyone who likes video games. So of course you can let me know down below what your list would look like. Really what I'm going to be doing is giving a brief overview of the game and comparing it against the games it was up against and seeing if the game holds up now. I like to consider myself a video game encyclopedia and I have played all of these games and yeah they really are all great and I'm excited to talk about all of them. There's plenty of games on here I've actually never talked about on the channel so it'll be pretty interesting. As always please like share comment subscribe we got the super thanks and the patreon any support truly and greatly is appreciated seriously you're awesome let's just get right into it of these 27 games from 1998 to now which do i think is the weakest i believe the weakest game on this list is overwatch from 2016 just like my other game of the year ranking list overwatch is the weakest just kind of by default really for the pure and simple fact that you can't actually play that game that won all those game of the year awards anymore they've since shut it down and replaced it with overwatch 2 and overwatch 2 haven't really put a lot of time into it and don't really care to i'm just not all that interested in 2016 overwatch was really hype it really was all that and i can see why it won so many game of the year awards and that's why it's so sad that they shut the original game down if you had asked me what my favorite game of 2016 was you know in 2016 or 2017 i probably would have told you overwatch as well nowadays i'd probably say uncharted 4 since you know you can still actually play it but hey this was all the way back in early 2017 when they did this ranking. It was up against some pretty stiff competition though. It was up against Battlefield 1, Inside, Pokemon Go, and Uncharted 4. Like I said, I think Uncharted 4 is the best game nowadays, but Battlefield 1 was actually a pretty solid game, really the last good Battlefield in my opinion. Inside, that's a pretty excellent indie game. It's a good cinematic platformer. And then Pokemon Go, I mean, we all know Pokemon Go. That game was a phenomenon and was easily one of, if not the biggest game of 2016. There were so, so many people playing it. But they gave the award to Overwatch, and just due to the fact that you can't actually play the game anymore, it's at the bottom here. If you could still play it, it would not be at the bottom as I think the game I played in 2016 quite a bit of is better than a lot of these games, but as it stands, yeah, it's at the bottom. But don't blame me, blame Activision Blizzard, as Overwatch really is one of the most mismanaged IPs just in history at this point, seriously. It should have been so much more than it is, and here we are where I feel like barely anybody talks about Overwatch 2 outside of a dedicated fan base that is. Anyway, let's move on. And here we have Untitled Goose Game, which won Game of the Year at their 23rd awards show, which was for 2019. Now, remember I talked about DICE is usually more legit than Geoff Keighley's show? Well, this is the one year where I wasn't really so sure. And if you look at all of the games on this list, this game really sticks out like a sore thumb. A lot, a lot of these games are considered some of the greatest games ever made. And then we have the Untitled Goose Game. Now, I get it, 2019 wasn't the strongest year for gaming but I think there were several other games that were better than the Untitled Goose Game. Look, Untitled Goose Game, it's pretty funny. It's got a great premise. It's incredibly unique and original and I actually do think it is fun but it is also only like an hour or two and its novelty begins to wear off by the end of it. It is a good game but 
It was up against some really great games. It was up against Control, Death Stranding, Disco Elysium, and The Outer Wilds. And honestly, I'd rather play any of those games over Untitled Goose Game. I think they're all better. I don't know how Untitled Goose Game legit won. I really don't. Again, it's a funny, interesting, different kind of experience. And I love the idea that you get to be this little asshole goose. But it was up against Control, which was a very solid third-person shooter with a really interesting premise. It was up against Death Stranding. And I know that game is clearly not everyone's cup of tea, but I loved it. I loved the narrative and the attention to detail and walking with all the shit on your back. Yes, I actually enjoyed it. It was up against Disco Elysium, which is one of the best CRPGs, really just one of the best RPGs of the last decade, with exceptional writing and interesting plot, and it has just a ton of replayability, which Untitled Goose Game, in my opinion, does not. And then we have Outer Wilds, which I haven't put a ton of time into, but it's a very interesting world that you get to explore. And things are different seemingly every time you play. And it's a really different kind of game from almost anything I've ever played. I love how there's the time limit and everything starts over. It's just really, again, different. All of these games, I think, are better than Untitled Goose Game. Untitled Goose Game, you play for a few hours. I think you could probably get a good five or six hours if you really did everything. But you play for a few hours. You laugh at its humor and its simplicity. You can appreciate it for that. But once you're done with it, man, it's not one of those experiences that is thought-provoking or really sits with you. All of the other games I just mentioned are. And I have nothing against meme games or joke games or games that are trying to make me laugh. I like that every game isn't super serious. And I think it's great that we can have games like Untitled goose game but game of the year i don't know about that i really don't know what they were thinking with this one it was a wild pick then and it's a wild pick now in this game it really just does not line up with the other 26 games but here we have it untitled goose game and let's move on and here we have the original call of duty which won game of the year for 2003 now this one it was a bit surprising as well the original call of duty is still a pretty good first person shooter nowadays there are plenty of other call of duties that i think are much better but the original game it was good it was a relatively relatively serious World War II shooter that really built on top of Medal of Honored Allied Assault. I still enjoy the game. I like that there's three different campaigns. The gun plays nice. There's some decent set pieces here, and it's still very accessible nowadays. If you've played any Call of Duty, you'll feel right at home with this game, as outside of the graphics, the game is really just kind of timeless. But for winning game of the year that year, compared to what it was up against, it's an interesting choice. I will say back in the earlier years of the DICE Awards, when they were known as the Interactive Achievement Awards, they didn't have a limit on how many Game of the Year nominees there could be, and some years they just went kind of crazy. This was one of those years. So Call of Duty was up against Command and Conquer Generals, Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, Rise of Nations, SSX3, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Now, in my opinion, I just named several games that I think are better than the original Call of Duty. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, SSX3, KOTOR, and Wind Waker, in my opinion, are better than Call of Duty. I have not played Command and Conquer Generals or Rise of Nations. If there's one area of the encyclopedia I'm lacking, it's strategy games, and that's why I haven't played them. I'm just not the most well-versed in strategy games, but almost all of these games, I think, are better than Call of Duty. Max Payne 2, I'm a little more iffy on, but I I know that's a hot take that I don't love Max Payne 2. At the end of the day, I'd probably still rather play Max Payne 2 than the original Call of Duty. So really, almost all of these games I think are better than Call of Duty, but Call of Duty was chosen as their game of the year for 2003, and I think it is a fine shooter, but I would not say that it's one of the best of the Call of Duty series or one of the best first-person shooters of the 2000s. It's a good, simple little shooter that you can have some fun with even nowadays. And here we have the original Sims, which won game of the year at the third award ceremony which was for 1999 and a little bit into 2000. The Sims actually came out in early 2000, but it was up against games from 99. Now, The Sims, it really doesn't need much of an introduction at this point. It is a life simulator, but obviously doesn't take itself too seriously. It's pretty kooky, goofy, and quirky and has easily become the most well-known simulator in all of gaming. And not just Life Sim either. There's plenty of other simulators nowadays, you know, Power Wash Simulator, Goat Simulator. Well, The Sims, it is truly the most popular of all The Sims. Jonathan 2024. Words of wisdom out here. But seriously, the original Sims is a classic. 
It was incredibly novel, creative, and different from really any other game released at the time. There's been plenty, plenty of imitators since then, but none have ever captured that original feel of The Sims. Sure, it's a bit rough around the edges nowadays, and there's so many quality of life improvements in later Sim games, to the point where I would say the weakest of the core Sim games I think is the original, but that original Sims is still a good game, and it won their game of the year. See, but what was it up against? Well, The Sims was up against Age of Empires 2, The Age of Kings, Donkey Kong 64, Pokemon Yellow, Soul Calibur, and Unreal Tournament. There's definitely some throwbacks in here. And do I think The Sims is better than all of these games? Maybe, maybe not. I would say I think The Sims is better than Age of Empires 2 and Donkey Kong 64, but better than Soul Calibur? I don't know about that one. Soul Calibur, that original game was pretty phenomenal. Pokemon Yellow, I'm a little more iffy on that. I love Pokemon, so I might be a little biased, but no, nah, I'd say Pokemon Yellow is a little better. And then Unreal Tournament, well, unfortunately, Epic Games recently shut down Unreal Tournament, but you can actually still play the game through fan-dedicated servers, so it's not totally dead like Overwatch, and I love Unreal Tournament. That's just a great game, and even in its compromised state, I'd rather play Unreal Tournament over The Sims, but that's also a personal preference thing. Now, while I think The Sims is good and the games it was up against are also good, there were a couple games that weren't even nominated for Game of the Year that I think are better than The Sims. Games like Final Fantasy VIII, Thief the Dark Project, Gran Turismo 2, and Sonic Adventure. I'd rather play all of these games over The Sims, but they weren't even nominated, so I guess that's just an honorable mention. Anyway, it's the original Sims, it's a classic, let's move on. And so here we have Battlefield 1942, which won Game of the Year at the 6th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2002. Now, Battlefield 1942 might have had its official server shut down some time ago, but you can still play the game online nowadays thanks to fan servers, and the game still does have a little bit of a dedicated community. It's not thriving like it used to be, but it's not totally wiped away from Earth like the original Overwatch. And the original Battlefield 1942, it was a good game then, and I think it's a good game now. I think there are plenty of other Battlefield games that are better, but this original game, it's a classic. It established a lot of things for the Battlefield formula. It was probably the most serious tactical first-person shooter set during World War II at the time, and the game had a surprising amount of depth to it, not just in its many weapons, but there were vehicles, the maps were pretty big, and there were a lot of players, and it's great to see how far Battlefield has come nowadays when it's good and I think the original is still pretty good. But what was Battlefield up against? Well, it was up against Animal Crossing, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Metroid Prime, and Ratchet and & Clank. Now, to be completely honest with you, this might upset some people, but I'd rather play probably all of those games over Battlefield 1942. Battlefield 1942 is still a good game, but man, I love the original Animal Crossing. It's aged incredibly well, and that's a great life simulator. GTA Vice City, one of the fan favorite Grand Theft Autos, it's actually aged pretty well. Metroid Prime, that game recently just got remastered, remade last year, and the game is phenomenal. And then the original Ratchet & Clank, I would say it's still pretty good. It's a bit simplistic compared to other Ratchet & Clank games, but I still enjoy the original game and I love its plot and characters. And there was a few other games from O2 that weren't even nominated. Games like the original Splinter Cell, Eternal Darkness, Kingdom Hearts, and the original Sly Cooper, and I think all of these are very good games as well. 2002? It's a pretty classic year in games, but they chose Battlefield 1942. At least for handheld game of the year, they chose Metroid Fusion, which is an excellent game that's worth playing. Anyway, to go back to Battlefield 1942, it's still a good shooter that has aged pretty well. If you like the Battlefield series, maybe you want to come back and see where the series got its start. It's not this outdated, clunky disaster like some people might think. No, the game is still good. I mean, it won their game of the year, so it must have been doing something, right? Anyway, here we have Journey, which won game of the year for the 16th annual Dice Awards, which was for 2012. Now, Journey, funny enough, I had actually never played the game really until very recently, where I finally sat down and played through it, and it's a beautiful game. It has an excellent presentation, fantastic music, it has pretty chill gameplay, it is basically a walking simulator, and I know that doesn't jive with everyone, but what it lacks in gameplay, it makes up for with its presentation, mood, vibe, and just atmosphere. This game is an experience through and through. You don't play it for a challenge, you don't play it because it has engaging gameplay or rewarding mechanics, you play it to experience the vibes, the emotion, the feelings, to hear the pretty music, and to just chill out for an hour or two. And like I said, I think it is a beautiful game, and it's not too long either. I really could recommend the game to anybody. It's a very different kind of experience than maybe what you expect from a video game, so I could see why they gave it their game of the year. Do I personally think it was the best game of 2012? No, but it was one of the best. 
It was up against Borderlands 2, Far Cry 3, The Walking Dead, and XCOM Enemy Unknown. Now, I love Journey and all, but man, those were some really good games I just listed off. Borderlands 2 is maybe the best of the whole Borderlands series, and it feels like everything after has just been trying to replicate 2's success because it was so good. Far Cry 3, maybe the best of the Far Cry series. It really fully established the Far Cry formula of what it was going to be going forward and has a fantastic antagonist. Borderlands 2 does as well. The Walking Dead, maybe Maybe the best Telltale game of them all, it just has a superb story and really feels like it was one of those games to bring point and click games back. I love The Walking Dead. And XCOM Enemy Unknown is one of the best strategy games you could play. And it really feels like they innovated on the turn-based tactics genre that plenty of other games have since taken from. Really, all of these games, including Journey, feel like they were trendsetters for either their franchise or the industry as a whole. And they are all great games. I could honestly make a case for each game as to why I think it's game of the year. They just are all that good. There were plenty of other games that came out that year, though, like Dishonored or Black Ops 2, or the very underrated Sleeping Dogs. 2012, there was a lot of good games that year, and Journey was what they chose, and yeah, it's a good game. It's a great experience, and it's one of the best of the walking simulators. And here we have the original God of War, the PS2 game, which won Game of the Year at the 9th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2005. Now, it's pretty crazy to come back to the original God of War, because the series really has changed so much in recent years. Like, the modern incarnation of God of War is just vast different from these original games. Like the original God of War is pretty raunchy, violent, and Kratos himself is just a completely different character. Like he's just full of rage, he's mad the whole time, and the gameplay is much more of a traditional character action game or hack and slash. It's more akin to say Devil May Cry than how it is nowadays where it's very story focused. This game is really not story focused. There's a premise, a setup, a little bit of backstory, and you're just on your way to killing basically everything but it still is a pretty good hack and slash. I think the combat has a little bit of depth. I like that you get different weapons. This was the first game, so I will cut it some slack, but in my opinion, there's just too many annoying puzzles in this game. I never loved the puzzles of God of War, and it kind of breaks the pace, but I can still appreciate what the original God of War did, and it had a pretty unique premise. At the time, Greek mythology in video games was not pummeled into the ground, so it was still very novel to see something like this. Now, what was God of War up against, you may ask? It was up against Call of Duty 2, Guitar Hero, Dogs, and Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, it's clear immediately from seeing that that 2005 might not have been the strongest year in gaming. Like, all of the games that were nominated are good games, but Game of the Year material? I don't know about that one. The original Guitar Hero and Dogs. Like, I've always considered those games just kind of alright and I think that they got way better as their series progressed. Call of Duty 2, you know, it is better than the original, and the original COD did win Game of the Year, so I guess it is a Game of the Year contender. And then we have Shadow of the Colossus, which I actually do think is very much worthy of Game of the Year, and that's probably my favorite Game of the Year from 2005. I love Shadow of the Colossus. That's an excellent game, and I'm kind of surprised that didn't win Game of the Year. Like, that is one of the most thought-provoking video games I've ever played, and I would easily put it above the original God of War, but that is what they chose. I know at this point it feels like I haven't agreed with a single one of their Game of the Years, and to be honest, I really haven't outside of Overwatch. Like, I get it, the DICE Awards are different. A lot of the time they give their Game of the Year out based off innovation and moving the entire industry forward, and yes, Guitar Hero certainly falls under that category. Dogs, I don't know about that, but there were games that weren't even nominated that I think should have been nominated. Games like Burn out revenge or the original fear or tom clancy's splinter cell chaos theory like chaos theory is a great game how is that not nominated anyway they chose god of war and i'm gonna just leave it at that and so here we have Little Big Planet, which won Game of the Year for the 12th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2008. Now, the original Little Big Planet, like Gears of War, was huge when it came out. People loved this game. It was one of those must-buy games for the PS3. You know, the PS3 did have a bit of a rocky start, but Little Big Planet is one of those games that made people go out and get a PS3. I knew a few people that got a PS3 just to play Little Big Planet. It is one of the best 2D platformers on the console. It's a fantastic 2.0. 5d platformer and it had an excellent vision where it was all about you creating the levels sure there was a campaign that was made by the developers but the big appeal was really people creating levels and just playing curated content and while I think Little Big Planet 2 really improves on the original game and adds a ton more, the original game is still pretty good. And the campaign is decent too. It's also incredibly cute and has a great presentation. The original Little Big Planet, it's a solid game. 
but it was up against some really, and I mean really big games. It was up against Fallout 3, Grand Theft Auto 4, Left 4 Dead, and Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. And all I gotta say is it was pretty ballsy of them to choose Little Big Planet over those games. Fallout 3 is a fantastic game. I love Fallout 3. Grand Theft Auto 4, that's a great game as well. Left 4 Dead, ooh, that's a really good one. Metal Gear Solid 4, man, I love Metal Gear Solid 4. All of these, all of these games are incredible. They're all fantastic games and I would really love to recommend all of them to you. And so I will go play all of them. They're all fantastic and totally worth playing. But 2008, there was some really good games this year. There were a few games that weren't nominated that were also really great that's worth bringing up. Like Dead Space came out in 2008. Wasn't even nominated, but Dead Space was a great game from 08. Gears of War 2 was also there. World of Goo, Fable 2. There's some really good games in 08. 08 was just a stellar year and Little Big Planet. It was one of the best games of the year for sure. See, but was it my favorite game from 08? No, it wasn't, but it's still a pretty great game. Now this one might ruffle a few feathers. Here we have GoldenEye, which won Game of the Year for the very first annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 1997. Now, the original GoldenEye, it really can't be understated what this game did for first-person shooters for consoles. Like, it really feels like there's a pre-GoldenEye FPS era and a post-GoldenEye one, and it certainly moves shooters forward. And the multiplayer is nothing short of legendary. This is one of the greatest multiplayers of any video game. Like, it was fun then, and it's even fun now. I actually still enjoy the multiplayer of GoldenEye even nowadays, but big ass butt like nice thick round ass here. I think the rest of GoldenEye hasn't actually aged very well. The single player, the missions, the levels, the presentation, it's all aged pretty terribly if we're being honest. And no, this isn't some case of oh Zoomer comes in and makes fun of old game. No, I grew up with GoldenEye. I love GoldenEye, but I also can see where it's flawed and to be honest with you, I think Perfect Dark has aged significantly better than GoldenEye. You gotta also remember there weren't set standards for first person shooters on consoles and so that's why you know the controls are just straight up not very good, the level design is a bit confusing, the presentation is just well that's just aged. And the game just gets straight up relentless by the end of it and you have no checkpoints and you'll be going through these borderline maze like levels just trying to figure out what you're exactly even supposed to do. Yeah, the original GoldenEye certainly aged. Still a good game of course and you can never take away its legacy but that's why I don't have this game like stupidly high on the list is because I just just think it's kind of aged like crap. But what was GoldenEye up against? It was up against some pretty awesome games of 97. It was up against Age of Empires, Blade Runner, Final Fantasy 7, Parappa the Rappa, Quake 2, Riven, which is the sequel to Myst, and Turok Dinosaur Hunter. So yeah, 97 was a pretty good year for games. Out of all the games I just mentioned, my favorite is easily Final Fantasy 7. That's one of my favorite games of all time, but there were some good ones here, you know? It's kind of funny to see Parappa the Rappa nominated for Game of the Year, but it was nominated Age of Empires. This would be the start of the legendary strategy series. The original Blade Runner game is a classic. Quake 2, one of the best shooters of the 90s. Riven, I actually have never tried. And then Turok Dinosaur Hunter is also a classic. I think GoldenEye is better than some of these games but not all of them. But it certainly was fun to look back and go, wow, there were so many classic games that came out in 97. Games that weren't nominated but are still awesome. Games like Diddy Kong Racing and Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Resident Evil 2, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Gex Enter the Gecko, the original Starcraft, the original Wild Arms, the original Sakodin. Like, there was a lot of great games in 97 that people talk about as some of the greatest games of all time here. There really was something for everyone, but they chose GoldenEye, and you know, when it comes to multiplayer, games that very well is probably my favorite game of the year as well and so here we have it takes two which won game of the year at the 25th annual dice awards which was for 2021 now it takes two i've talked a few times about this game on the channel i think it's a fantastic cooperative experience it's one of the best cooperative games ever made it has a great premise about these two people working together even when they don't want to for the sake of their child. It has some really touching moments and I think the story is quite good. The gameplay also has a ton of variety. It never gets old. You're doing something different every hour. And it is one of those games that I truly think anyone can enjoy. I mean, you have to play with a friend, family member, enemy, dog, goldfish. You have to play with someone that can at least cooperate with you. So it'll be interesting in that sense. Now, I can easily recall when it takes to one game of the year from not just Geoff's show, but the Dice Awards. There were plenty of people going, you really think it takes two is the game of the year? And yeah, they did. It was up against some big games. It was up against Deathloop, Inscription, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Returnal. Now, this is different 
different from Geoff's show, actually, as Psychonauts 2 and Metroid Dread were not nominated, and I think those are both excellent games. My personal pick is Psychonauts 2, but Deathloop, that's a pretty solid, immersive sim, and I think it's one of Arcane's best. I know some people don't think so, but I enjoy the game. Inscription, I actually have not gotten around to trying this, and I really have wanted to, as it looks very interesting. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is one of the best Ratchet & Clank games in my opinion. It's a pretty solid third person shooter. And then Returnal, I actually just recently played through and I actually really enjoyed this game. I don't really enjoy roguelikes all that much, but this is one of the best ones I've ever played. It was super fast and just very different from most AAA games, especially what Sony puts out. It was very different in that sense. And I'm surprised that they actually had the balls to put out such a challenging game. It's a good one. Out of all the games that were nominated and won, I think It Takes Two is probably the the best of them though and maybe i'm out here now with the hot takes but i really did enjoy it takes two it's one of the best cooperative experiences i've ever had with a game and it's very easy to pick up and play and have fun with and there's just so many different things going on it feels like you're never doing the same thing twice in this game and i just loved how creative and varied it was and i'll be there for joseph's next game because if it's even half as good as it takes two it's gonna be a pretty good game and here we have gears of war which won game of the year at the 10th annual interactive achievement award which was for 2006. Now the original Gears of War is still one of the best 360 games you could play nowadays. It was an absolute juggernaut when it came out. It was a huge deal and the series went on to be one of the most famous series on Xbox's consoles. Why we don't have a game on the current Xbox, I do not know, but this original game it slapped then, and it really does slap nowadays. It is aged incredibly well. Its gameplay was very forward-thinking, and it is just a superb third-person shooter with a great campaign, and it had really solid multiplayer for the time as well. Sure, there have been plenty of other Gears of War games since, and I'd argue they're better than this original game, but the original Gears of War, especially for the time, it was a really good game, and it was a big deal. I can see why they chose it for Game of the Year, but it also had some really stiff competition. It was up against Guitar Hero 2, Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, Zelda Twilight Princess, and Wii Sports. I know you might chuckle and snicker at Wii Sports, but you gotta also remember in 2006, Wii Sports was a huge deal. And everybody and their mom literally was playing Wii Sports. Like, who doesn't like Wii Sports? Guitar Hero 2, it's a very solid choice as well. It's a good improvement on the first one. Twilight Princess is a really great Zelda. It's one of the best 3D Zeldas. And while I personally wouldn't have it in like my top three, I still think it is a pretty great game. And then Oblivion, a lot of people think Oblivion is Bethesda's greatest game. And while I personally don't think that, I still think Oblivion is a great game. Out of all the games on here, I might actually go with Gears of War. I know, I finally agree with which game won game of the year. Until I remember we're talking about Oblivion, and now I'm not so sure. I'm a pretty indecisive guy, I kind of flip-flop look. Oblivion, Gears of War, they're both great games. In the end, Gears of War was chosen. And I think it's a great third-person shooter, and if you like third-person shooters and have not tried Gears of War, oh, I really recommend you do, as the series is just pretty timeless at this point. Not to mention that the original Gears of War just has this amazing atmosphere that none of the other games have. Like, man, that original Gears is dark, and I love it. I love the original Gears. I could talk about it for a while. I did rank all of them a while back, but in the future I want to redo it. But that's for another day. And so here we have Dragon Age Inquisition, which won Game of the Year at the 18th Annual Dice Awards, which was for 2014. Now, Dragon Age Inquisition, I have talked about several times on this channel. It won a lot of Game of the Year awards for 2014, and I think it was one of the best games from 2014. Is it my favorite game from 2014? No, it's definitely not. I think it's a very solid RPG. It has some really great mechanics. I like all the characters. I like the battle mechanics, and I like where the story and world goes. Is it my favorite Dragon Age game? It probably is, and I know plenty of people have told me they don't think it is, and that's fine. I mean, this game has its detractors for sure. But at the end of the day, I still do enjoy Dragon Age Inquisition. I think it is one of Bioware's best. What was it up against in 2014? See, it was up against Destiny, Far Cry 4, Hearthstone, and Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor. And you know, I would say the Dragon Age Inquisition is better than all of the other games nominated. I agree with them in this sense, but they also didn't nominate games that I think were better than Dragon Age Inquisition. Games like Mario Kart 8 and South Park Stick of Truth, those are like my favorite games from 2014. In fact, South Park Stick of Truth is really one of my favorite games ever, so... 
Maybe I'm just a little biased here. Some people have said 2014 is one of the weaker years in gaming, and I agree and disagree at the same time. I don't think it went crazy, but I still think there were plenty of good games. But you know, out of all the games they nominated, yes, I agree with them. Dragon Age Inquisition is the best in my opinion. My follow-up would probably be Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar. That's a pretty good game, and I'd say the weakest one of these is probably Destiny 1. I mean, I don't really know why that one was nominated. I thought that game was just all hype, and I was never about the original destiny never was never will be to be honest but yeah 2014 decent enough year for games and dragon age inquisition seems to be most people's favorite at least when it comes to these publications it is the favorite it's the one i've noticed that pops up the most and so here we have Fallout 4, which won Game of the Year for the 19th Annual Dice Awards, which was for 2015. Now, choosing Fallout 4 as Game of the Year is a very interesting choice. 2015 was a superb year for video games. There was a lot of amazing games, and Fallout 4 is one of my favorites. Like, I love Fallout 4. It's one of my favorite Fallout games. I put a ton of time into this game. I love the sense of exploration, the characters. Sure, the story falls off the second half, but I just love exploring around the wasteland getting into a bunch of nonsense i like the companions i think the gun plays pretty decent and while it is lacking in rpg elements i still thought it was a very enjoyable experience is it the perfect fallout game no it's definitely not and it has its issues but it was up against some really big games that year it was up against bloodborne Ori in the Blind Forest, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now, I'm just shocked that Witcher 3 did not win. Like, it feels like this is one of the very few publications that actually did not have Witcher 3 win Game of the Year. Like, Witcher 3 just dominated all of the Game of the Year conversations, and it didn't win here. They chose Fallout 4 above it, which, again, a very interesting choice. That's certainly my pick for Game of the Year. I love The Witcher 3. Bloodborne is also a fantastic game. I'd probably have Bloodborne born above fallout 4 or in the blind forest unfortunately i have not played it yet and rise of the tomb raider is actually pretty good i don't really hear many people talk about the newer tomb raider games these days but i enjoyed rise of the tomb raider sure it had a pretty weak story but it was still good and not just an uncharted clone but at the end of the day, you really can't go wrong with any of these games. These are all fantastic games that I think just about anybody can enjoy. I know there's plenty of people that don't like Fallout 4, but that's not me. I really do enjoy the game. And 2015, I think, was a pretty good year for gaming all around. Outside of the games that were nominated, I mean, there was plenty of other good games like Rocket League and Undertale and... MGS5 or the underrated Mad Max game, I very much love that game. Anyway, Fallout 4 is what was chosen, let's move on. And so here we have Diablo 2, which won Game of the Year for the 4th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for games in 2000 and early 2001. Now Diablo 2 is a certified classic, it is one of the most beloved computer games of all time. People absolutely love the original Diablo 2 and it's very easy to see why. It has a great gameplay loop, it had an excellent presentation, and it just hits like very few other games do. Like Diablo 2 is without a doubt one of the greatest action RPGs of all time. It's an excellent hack and slash and the loot system is low-key revolutionary for games. So many games owe their loot system or progression to how Diablo 2 did it. Like people love Diablo 2 for a reason. It's a good game and it's probably the best of the entire Diablo series. And it's when Blizzard was really at their A game, at least when I believe they're at their A game. Now when it comes to games they nominated for this year for 2000 to early 2001 they just went fucking nuts and nominated a ton of games so let me list these off for you they nominated age of empires 2 the conquerors asherin's call baldur's gate 2 shadow of om banjo tui chrono cross command and conquer red alert 2 deus ex disney's magic artist 3d everquest the ruins of kunark fifa 2001 wait what final fantasy 9 jack ryan radio lynx 2001 madden nfl 2001 huh mech warrior 4 vengeance rayman 2 The Great Escape, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Loopy Landscapes, Sacrifice, Shenmue, Skies of Arcadia, Spyro Year of the Dragon, SSX, Tekken Tag Tournament, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, The Operative No One Lives Forever, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Virtua Tennis, and they even nominated WWF No Mercy. This list went crazy. Like that list could be a video in itself. It's that long and there's that many amazing games. I'll just say I think Diablo 2 is one of the very best games mentioned that year and I can easily see why they chose Diablo 2. But there is a ton of good games in that list. I guess 2000 really just was a banger of a year but 
man, what were they thinking with a list that big? It's pretty crazy. And here we have Halo Combat Evolved, which won Game of the Year for the fifth annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was really for 2001. Now, Halo doesn't really need much of an introduction, a landmark title for gaming, and really what solidified Microsoft's push into gaming as a whole. The original Halo really is one of the most classic, fondly looked upon first person shooters of the last 20, 30 years. Like, people have so many great memories with the original Halo, and I'm not here to shit on anybody's memories but I'll just say the original Halo has not aged remarkably. I still think it's a good to great game. I mean, look how high it is on this list still, but there are a few areas that I don't think have aged. I think some of the levels, especially towards the second half of the game, aren't amazing, but the game still has a lot going for it as it had a great premise, atmosphere, excellent multiplayer, and really great shooting. The shooting is actually still very good nowadays, and the AI was a spectacle, at least for the time. Like, the original Halo, all things considered, it has aged well. It's just, man, I hate the fucking library and the flood. I swear, when the floods show up, everything just goes to shit, man. I hate the flood. But anyway, what was Halo up against? It was up against Black and White, Eco, and Sid Meier Civilization 3. And that's it. Yeah, I don't know why they only had four games nominated. The previous year, which Diablo 2 won, they had like 10, 15 plus games nominated. So they did the opposite and just nominated almost nothing. Out of the four games nominated, yeah, Halo Combat Evolved is definitely the best game. I agree with them there. I don't know why they didn't nominate like Metal Gear Solid 2, Grand Theft Auto 3, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Gran Turismo 3, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, Pikmin, the original Jack and Daxter. I don't know why none of these games were nominated. They're all fantastic. But oh well, I'm not really going to lose much sleep knowing that 20 plus years ago they didn't nominate some of my favorite games ever. In fact, I'm just not going to sleep at all. I'm so upset about it. Like, what the fuck? How do you not nominate Melee or Grand Theft Auto 3 or MGS2 or Pro Skater 3? Like, these are some of the greatest games of the 2000s and they weren't even nominated, but you nominated Black and White? Man, I don't hear anybody talking about Black and White compared to the games I just mentioned, but I guess it's not a popularity contest. At the end of the day, that's what they chose back in 2002, and it's just their opinion. I certainly don't agree with it, but as you've seen, if you've made it to this part of the video, I haven't agreed with most of their choices, and I doubt I'll agree agree with a lot more of them. Let's just move on. And here we have God of War 2018, which won Game of the Year for their 2018 awards, which was the 22nd annual DICE Awards. And yes, it is pretty funny that we have two games titled God of War on this list. Now, the 2018 God of War, I don't really know what else is left to say about it. It moved the series in a bold new direction. It became very story focused and much more in line with what Sony puts out these days. You know, third person, over the shoulder, story based cinematic game with a really strong main character. This this time being Kratos, who's very different from those original games. He's a lot older, more mature, and just cares about his son. And the story is pretty excellent. Like, the story and the characters, the relationship between Kratos and Atreus, it's one of the best relationships of any video game. The story and the writing and how cinematic everything is, it's fantastic. The gameplay is pretty good also. I don't think it's the very best hack and slash, and I think Ragnarok is way better when it comes to the gameplay, but it's still a good game gameplay-wise, and the presentation is nothing short of phenomenal and there is a reason why so many publications had it as its game of the year award there were some really awesome games for 2018 though it was up against into the breach marvel spider-man red dead redemption 2 and return of the abra din now a lot of people have said that they thought red dead redemption 2 got gypped for game of the year and i kind of agree i think red dead redemption 2 is better than god of war i don't think that's the hottest of takes and out of the list here i would say this is the best game i've actually never played return of the abra din or into the breach but into the breach looks very interesting marvel spider-man i mean i talked enough about that game already but god of war 2018 yeah it's a very good game and it really has one of the best stories you could find in any modern game for sure if you're a fan of storytelling in games or you like story based games and haven't tried God of War, I really recommend you do. And then move on to Ragnarok, which as you know, I was part of the game's production. I know y'all make fun of me, but I'm going to bring it up every time because I'm proud of that achievement. So yeah, I was. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next game. And so here we have Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which won Game of the Year for the 11th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2007. Now, 2007 is one of the greatest years in gaming history. It's probably the best year in gaming for the 2000s, this or 04. Like, this year was a banger. There was so many great games that came out in 07, and COD 4 is near the top of that list. Like, it's a great game. It's frequently called one of the best Call of Duties. It really was the Call of Duty that made the 
this series explode with popularity, bringing it into modern day is just what the series needed, and it feels like every COD since can pay something back to the original COD 4. It had a shocking, amazing campaign that's one of the best in COD's history, great multiplayer and excellent presentation, and it's still very playable nowadays. It has aged incredibly well. The presentation is still very strong. Like, I love COD 4. I've played a ton of this game. It's one of my favorite Call of Duties, and I can see why so many people loved it, and I can see why they also gave it Game of the Year. It was one of the most popular, best games of 07, but man, 07? had some really fire games. Like this is just what they had nominated against COD 4. They had Bioshock, Rock Band, The Orange Box, and Super Mario Galaxy. But there's way more games than just this. There was Mass Effect, there was Crisis, there was the original Uncharted, there was Skate, there was Halo 3. Like there were so many great games in 07 and why they nominated Rock Band over several other ones like Halo 3, I do not know. But 07, banger of a year you honestly could not go wrong with almost any game from 2007 but again i can totally see why they chose cod 4 like it is one of the best multiplayer experiences of the 2000s and it's a ton of fun it was fun then it's still fun now there's still plenty of people playing call of duty 4 like call of duty 4 will never die because it really was just the next big step for the franchise and a lot of people believe that the series never reached that height again. I think it did with like Black Ops 2 but the original COD 4 it's still up there and it very well might have the best campaign of the entire franchise. It was certainly really shocking for the time. And I think Call of Duty 4 really is one of those must play experiences if you like first person shooters or really just video games in general. Like I think almost anybody can like something with it. Alright we've finally gotten into the top 10 and here we have Uncharted 2 which won game of the year for the 13th annual Interactive Achievement Awards which was for 2009. Now I recently talked about Uncharted 2. I actually talked about all of Naughty Dog's games but Uncharted 2 is one of the best ones they've ever made. It's an incredibly cinematic third person shooter that tells an excellent tale about Nathan Drake and is quite a substantial improvement on the original Uncharted. It has some of the greatest set pieces you will find in any video game like the train intro. Seriously, the train intro is one of the best intros to any video game period and while I don't think it is aged perfectly, especially when it comes to the shooting, I still think the game is very accessible and is still an incredibly great experience. That and the game still looks really great, like this game is 10 plus years old and you could convince me it came out maybe a few years ago, it still looks really good and back in 2009 this game, it was kind of the shit. I remember hearing a lot of people talk about Uncharted 2 and a lot of publications said that it was the best game of the year, but what else was it up against in 2009? Well Uncharted 2 was up against Assassin's Creed 2, Batman Arkham Asylum, COD Modern Warfare 2, the 2009 game, and Dragon Age Origins. Now all of these are great games and are very good in their own right. Do I think Uncharted 2 is the best of all of them? Maybe? This one honestly I'm pretty torn on. Like Assassin's Creed 2 is a great game, one of the best Assassin's Creed games. It really improved the formula of the original game. Arkham Asylum was the best Batman game ever at that point. Like it's a great game. COD MW2 is pretty good. The campaign is really great and really shocking with no rush in. The multiplayer, unfortunately, I don't think was amazing because of just horrible balancing, but it's still a good game. And Dragon Age Origins, while I haven't put a ton of time into it, I think it is pretty good. And it's impressive how many backstories you can have in the game alone. Outside of what was nominated, there were some other really good games that came out as well, like... Left 4 Dead 2, Prototype, Red Faction Guerrilla, Mar and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, Borderlands 1, shit, I guess Farmville came out in 2009, but we're not going to talk about Farmville any further on the channel. Look, those are just some of the great games of 2009. 2009 was actually a pretty banger year. And it was one of the peak years for the 2000s, like they really went out with a bang and I remember growing up with a lot of these games and really enjoying them and still thinking that they're great nowadays. A lot of games have aged incredibly well from this year and you really can't go wrong with any of the games nominated. But Uncharted 2, yeah, that's a pretty great game and I really do enjoy it. 
And so here we have Hades, which won Game of the Year at the 24th Annual Dice Awards, which was for 2020. Now, 2020 was another year that had a lot of bangers. A lot of horrible things happened in 2020, but the games that came out that year, ooh, there were some really great games, and Hades is absolutely one of the best ones. In my opinion, easily the best indie game of the year. Really just one of the best games of the year, period. Now, Hades is a roguelike, and I don't particularly love roguelikes. Like, I've dabbled in them, and I think some of them are pretty decent but Hades shit this is like the best roguelike I have ever played I have never enjoyed a roguelike this much and I don't know if I will again maybe Hades too but this game really slaps like it sees you playing as Zagreus the son of Hades as he tries to escape the underworld and he just keeps trying over and over he dies but he gets a little further every time and I love the structure I love the setup and they actually made the roguelike setup make sense from a story perspective which I feel like a lot of roguelike do not even attempt to do outside of this in Returnal. I actually really like the story and the characters. I think they're pretty great and there's a lot of excellent dialogue here. And then the gameplay, it's just a stellar hack and slash that is very, very replayable. It has an excellent art style, a fantastic soundtrack, and some of the most addicting gameplay you will find from any video game. It really was one of my favorite games from 2020, but 2020 had some amazing games. It was up against Animal Crossing New Horizons, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghosts of Tsushima, and The Last of Us Part II. All of these games, fantastic. Truly fantastic, and you know what? I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like, all of these games really were just excellent, and I really enjoyed all of them. And it's a real shame that we look back at 2020 and see just how many people died, how sick everyone got, how the economy went crazy, and just how much bad stuff really happened that year. Like, one of the worst years in human history. But when it came to the video games that came out, man, we were eating so good. It was like every, every other month. We had a big AAA release that was very anticipated, long time in development, and was really hype, and it ended up being pretty good also. We were eating good, and it's a good thing we were because we were all locked inside, and it was just a lot, a lot of bad stuff. You know what? I'd rather not think about 2020, so let's just move on. Hades, excellent game. And here we have a game that doesn't need much of an introduction these days, but we have Breath of the Wild, which won Game of the Year at the 21st Annual Dice Awards, which was for 2017. Now, Breath of the Wild, I've talked about several times on the channel. I think we're all pretty familiar with it at this point. It really reinvigorated the entire Zelda franchise, just giving you this massive open world to explore. And really just telling you to just go at it however you want. Here's some tools at your disposal. Go wherever you want, however you like. There's a bunch of solutions. There's shrines. There's the Korok Seeds. Of course, you do have the objective to stop Ganon. And the story is pretty minimal overall. But there's a bunch of different ways you can go about everything. It's really one of the biggest open worlds, especially for the time. And it's one of those just unforgettable experiences. I personally think Tears of the Kingdom is better. But Breath of the Wild walked so Tears of the Kingdom could run. But you also got to remember, 2017 was a pretty banger year, especially for Nintendo. So what was Breath of the Wild up against? It was up against Cuphead, Horizon Zero Dawn, Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds, and Super Mario Odyssey. Now, the first one I'm going to acknowledge is PUBG. You know, PUBG was huge back in 2017. I played the shit out of PUBG. I really actually played a lot of PUBG and really liked it. But over the years, yeah, I really don't think it's that good anymore, especially as there has been so many other battle royales that are just so much better than PUBG. And at this point, I'm just kind of like, eh, PUBG, yeah, it was alright, we all played it back then, but I don't know if it's really that good now. Now, Cuphead, oh, I love Cuphead, one of my favorite indie games of all time, it's just a fantastic game with a beautiful art direction. Horizon Zero Dawn, yeah, I think it's pretty good, it's a pretty good open world game, it came out around Breath of the Wild, and yeah, I'd much rather play Breath of the Wild, but Horizon is good, it was developed by Gorilla, and I was glad they just finally left Killzone, it was a new IP, and it had some really interesting world building. I won't lie though, at times it did feel a bit formulaic. I think Forbidden West is quite a bit better. And then we have Super Mario Odyssey, which I think is just a fantastic game. I love 3D Mario games, and this is like the best of them all. It is just excellent, has the best levels. So, so many different power-ups and ways to go about objectives. Like, I really love Super Mario Odyssey. It might be my favorite game on the Switch, period. And I kind of like it more than Breath of the Wild, but Breath of the Wild is a very good choice, and it makes sense why they would choose it. Breath of the Wild would actually be a bit of a trendsetter going forward so many other games owe their inspiration to Breath of the Wild. Sure, Breath of the Wild wasn't the first game to have this big open world, but there's clearly been a shift towards that after Breath of the Wild. 2017 all around really was just a banger year, especially if you were big on Nintendo. You were eating real good. I don't know if we've ever gotten another year that was so good for Nintendo after 2017. There's been some other good ones, but man, 
2017 was real good. So here we have Mass Effect 2, which won Game of the Year for the 14th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2010. Now 2010, this was another really banger year, and Mass Effect 2 is an excellent game, maybe the best game Bioware has ever made, a superb follow-up to that original game in really every aspect. The storytelling's better, the story itself is way more interesting, the characters are great, some of the best companions you'll find in any game. The third person shooting is a hell of a lot better than whatever the first game had. Solid RPG elements, excellent world building replayability and it really was just a fantastic game through and through and so many people look back very fondly on Mass Effect 2 especially after 3's ending but I still think 3 was a pretty good game but it's not 2. Mass Effect 2 it really is a superb game but 2010 was no slouch in good games either. There was a few other games it was up against that were pretty solid also. It was up against Call of Duty Black Ops, God of War 3, Red Dead Redemption, and Angry Birds HD. Now, why was it up against Angry Birds HD? Your guess is as good as mine. You know, Angry Birds was pretty popular back then. I don't know if it's Game of the Year material, but here we are. Black Ops 1. Oh, Black Ops 1 is pretty good. One of the very best of the Call of Duty series. God of War 3, an excellent game. One of the best of the God of War series. It has some of the best spectacles you'll find in any video game even nowadays and then red dead redemption i'm kind of surprised this one didn't win game of the year i mean red dead redemption is just a fantastic game as well i don't think you'll find many people saying they don't care for red dead redemption 2010 though it did have a bunch of other really good games like fallout new vegas splinter cell conviction alan wake enslaved super mario galaxy 2 like i'm surprised super mario galaxy 2 wasn't nominated for game of the year but there was a lot of excellent games in 2010 and it's really easy to forget that because mass effect 2 and red dead redemption and fallout new Vegas it feels like just kind of dominate the conversation but they were just some of the excellent games that came out this year what would I choose I'd probably choose Mass Effect 2 as well I mean it's either that or Red Dead Redemption I love both of them but I could see why they'd go with either one I think they're both great games and I think they're both games that pretty much should be experienced by everyone who plays video games. I think it's got something for everybody, and I can just really have a hard time imagining someone going, yeah, I don't like Red Dead Redemption, I don't like Mass Effect 2, but what do you like is my question. Are you an Angry Birds HD kind of guy? Because that, that just ain't me. But either way, 2010, yeah, it was a good year for games, and we had plenty of good choices here. And so here we have a big one. Here we have Half-Life 2, which won Game of the Year for the 8th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 2004. Now, 2004 is one of the very best years in gaming, period. It is a banger of a year. There was so many amazing games that came out in 04, and Half-Life 2 being at the top, it's a very good choice. Half-Life 2 really is one of those unforgettable experiences, one of the greatest games ever made. It has an excellent story, superb level design. Decent to good gunplay and combat. The AI is actually really good. The game constantly keeps things interesting and engaging. It has a pretty kick-ass soundtrack and presentation. Half-Life 2, oh, it's so good. I've talked about it a few times, but I'll always praise the hell out of Half-Life 2. I love this game. I played it a long time ago, and I've played through it several times since then, and every time it's been a banger. Half-Life 2 is just probably one of the very best first-person shooters ever made. But Half-Life 2 was not the only stellar game that year. In terms of Game of the Year, Half-Life 2 was up against GTA San Andreas, Halo 2, Katamari Damacy, and World of Warcraft. All of these are huge heavy hitters. Like San Andreas is one of the best Grand Theft Auto games of them all. It's one of the most beloved video games like of all time. I love San Andreas. It's so good. Halo 2, maybe the best of the whole Halo series. It's just a fantastic first person shooter as well. Katamari Damacy, the start of a great series and is some of the most fun you could have with a video game. That original game is a banger also. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than the original game, to be honest. And World of Warcraft, do I even need to say anything on this? One of the most popular MMOs of all time. And it really is one of the most influential games of not just the 2000s, but of all time. It is pretty crazy just how influential WoW is. I mean, it's still around nowadays. That's just how influential and big it was. But those weren't the only big games from 04. 04 had some fantastic other games that were not nominated for Game of the Year. Games like Burnout 3 Takedown, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, Doom 3, Far Cry 1, Fable, The Sims 2, Prince of Persia The Warrior Within, Jack 3, Sly 2, Metroid Prime 2, The Original Rome Total War, Tony Hawk Underground 2, Need for Speed Underground 2, like the list goes on and on. 04 really is just one of the greatest years in gaming, and it maybe is the best year of the 2000s. Not maybe, I think it is the best year of the 2000s. There were just so many good games this year. And a lot of the games I just mentioned really are like 
era defining. A lot of these games define the 2000s. When people think of playing video games in the 2000s, they're thinking of some of the games I just mentioned, especially the early to mid 2000s. They're thinking of these games and for a reason. They're all bangers. Half-Life 2 being at the top of the mountain totally makes sense, but just know that mountain is a really big one. There's a lot of games here that were fantastic. Seriously, 04, one of the best years ever. And here we have a game that also really doesn't need an introduction at this point. We have The Last of Us, which won Game of the Year at the 17th Annual Dice Awards, which was for 2013. Now, The Last of Us, this game's been talked to death. I even recently just did a little bit of an in-depth review on it a couple weeks ago. We all love The Last of Us, just one of the most beloved games of all time. It's incredibly cinematic. It has a gripping, emotional, dramatic narrative that has some of the best character and world building you'll find in any game. The shooting is very good. The level design is great. Great. the encounters are great, the enemies are really interesting, and the ending is nothing short of incredibly powerful. Like the original Last of Us, it was big then, and it's just as big, if not bigger now. We all like The Last of Us, I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't, but a majority of people really love The Last of Us. But aside from The Last of Us, there were some pretty great other games in 2013. It was up against Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Bioshock Infinite, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Now, Grand Theft Auto 5, I'm shocked this didn't win. It won like every other game of the year award it felt like. Well, it was either this or Last of Us. In fact, I'm really surprised that not a single Grand Theft Auto game has actually won DICE's game of the year. Isn't that pretty wild? Like, I don't know, that just seems really wild to me. But Grand Theft Auto 5, an excellent game. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. This might be the best of the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. Maybe the best pirate game ever made. I love this game. Bioshock Infinite, while it does have its doubters and haters, I still really enjoyed Infinite. I didn't love all of Infinite, but I thought it was a very good game and a really solid first-person shooter. And then Zelda A Link Between Worlds is a pretty great game also. It's one of the better 2D Zelda games, and it's a really nice remake of the original game with some extra stuff. I... I think this one's pretty good. There were some other great games that came out that year. There was Pokemon X and Y. Yes, that was a good one. Fire Emblem Awakening. I know that's a fan favorite. There was The Wolf Among Us. I love The Wolf Among Us. Rayman Legends, The Tomb Raider Reboot, Rise Son of Rome. That game's underrated. There was a lot of good games in 2013. This was when the PS4 and the Xbox One launched, so there wouldn't be a ton of amazing games right off the bat, but there would be more in the future. 2013, a very good year. Picking The Last of Us, that's not a wrong decision. That's probably what I would pick as well or grand theft auto 5 either way you're winning here all right and in the number four spot we have another game that really does not need an introduction we have the elder scrolls 5 skyrim which won game of the year at the 15th annual interactive achievement awards which was for 2011 2011 was a banger year. It was the best year of gaming in the 2010s, in my opinion. There were so many fantastic games, and at times it really feels like it was the peak of gaming. I was still very much growing up and was in high school at that time, but I remember just going nuts with how many amazing games are coming out left and right, and it feels like up until 2023, nothing had honestly matched that year. And to see Skyrim at the top of the mountain, the top game, what they picked as game of the year, it's not surprising at all. It's Skyrim. It's one of the greatest games ever made, one of the best open world games, one of the most expansive games you could ever play. It really is Bethesda's magnum opus. It's probably their best game. I mean, they've re-released it more than any other game. Skyrim just has so much going for it, man, whether it's the world, the characters, the, how many different ways you can play the game, the factions... And it really just had so much going for it, especially at the time. They didn't make games this big regularly back then. Nowadays, every game wants to be the next giant RPG that takes all of your life away. But Skyrim was different for the time. It was this massive open world you could put 100 plus hours in and still be finding new stuff. Man, it was crazy. The Skyrim hype was very real. Way more real than the Starfield hype, especially post-launch. That's all I will say. Skyrim... It's a fantastic game, but 2011, shit, there were so many good games. In terms of what Skyrim was up against, they had nominated Batman Arkham City, Portal 2, Zelda Skyward Sword, and Uncharted 3, all fantastic games. Arkham City, like the best superhero game ever made, the best Batman game ever made, one of my favorite video games of all time, Super Portal 2, one of the best games Valve's ever made, an excellent follow-up to the original game, Skyward Sword, pretty great Zelda game. Uncharted 3, one of the best Uncharted games, some really excellent set pieces, and the game still looks phenomenal. But outside of those, oh, there were so many good games in 2011. It felt like we were just getting amazing games left and right. There was Bastion, there was L.A. Noir, there was Dead Space 2, there was Mario Kart 7, there was Ghost Trick. 
There was Deus Ex Human Revolution, there was Rayman Origins, there was Little Big Planet 2, there was Gears of War 3, there was Battlefield 3, Crisis 2, Rage. Seriously, there were so many good games in 2011. It is mind blowing to look back and just go, holy shit, man. There were some really freaking good games this year. We did not know just how good we had it till several years later when I think a lot of us figured out like, hey, 2011 went nuts. No other year has gone this nuts until 2023, in my opinion. But 2011, you really can't go wrong with most of the games releasing this year. There really weren't that many bad games. There was a lot of amazing, fantastic games that would go on to be some of the best of their series or genre. Seriously, there's a lot of good games this year. And to see Skyrim chosen as their game of the year, not surprising, and I totally agree with it. Just one of the best games of all time. It's Skyrim insert shitty Skyrim meme here. Let's just move on. You already know how good this game is. And here we have a game that was commonly referred to as the greatest video game of all time for a good while, and that is Zelda Ocarina of Time, which was Game of the Year for the second annual Interactive Achievement Awards, which was for 1998 and some of 99. Now, 1998 has regularly been called maybe the greatest year in gaming, and honestly, it's really not hard to see why so many people love 98. It's easily the best year of gaming in the 90s. And it feels like it was just one revolutionary game after the next. And to see Orcarina of Time chosen as Game of the Year, really not surprising. A lot of people think that this is maybe the greatest game of all time or the most influential game of all time. A lot of 3D games, really every 3D game can pay something back to Orcarina of Time. While it wasn't the first 3D game, it really set the standard going forward for seemingly every 3D game. Orcarina of Time has been talked to death. I actually haven't really talked about it on the channel. I love this game. I think it's fantastic still. I played it as a kid, thought it was great, have played it nowadays. I still think it's great. I don't have it at the very top of the list, I don't think it's the greatest game ever made, and I'll be honest, there are certain areas that I think it's kind of aged like dog shit, like when you have to use the C buttons, and I think the remake is actually a lot better in that aspect, but it's really easy to see why people still love the game and hold it in such a high regard, because even all these years later, the game is still fantastic. It's just kind of goaded forever. What was Orcarina of Time up against? It was up against Banjo-Kazooie, Grim Fandango, Half-Life, Metal Gear Solid, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, and Sid Meier's Alpha Sentinel. Turi. Now, outside of the Sid Meier game, I have played all of these games several times over there. Some of my favorite video games ever made. Straight up, a lot of these really are games like Banjo-Kazooie, Grim Fandango, Half-Life, and Metal Gear Solid. I've played through time and time again. These are just phenomenal, phenomenal, excellent video games that I think should be experienced by everybody. They're so good. But Outside of that, there was a lot of fantastic games that came out that year. Games like the original Spyro the Dragon, Parasite Eve, F-Zero X, the original Hotshot Golf, 1080 Snowboarding, Fallout 2, Baldur's Gate, the original Tenshu, Oddworld, Abe's Exodus, the list just goes on and on and on. 98 will be heralded forever as one of the very best years in gaming. So many amazing franchises got their start or their 3D incarnation this year and it just feels like a turning point for all of video games where they all moved to 3D and they just started getting really, really good. And Orcarina of Time is one of the greatest games ever made. It's one of the best Zelda games. And I think it should be experienced by everybody. Truly, everybody should experience Orcarina of Time, whether it's the original or the remake. I think everybody should try it at least once. It's not only one of the most important games ever for gaming, but it really still is one of the best games ever made. And I have no problem recommending it. I think all these years later, the game is still phenomenal and it still is totally worth playing. All right, here's where things are a little interesting. Here we have what I believe to be the winner of the 27th annual DICE Awards, which is for 2023, and I have Baldur's Gate 3. This is just a prediction. As of this recording, it has not happened yet. The games that are up for Game of the Year are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cocoon, Marvel Spider-Man 2, and Tears of the Kingdom. And as I just stated, I think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win. Baldur's Gate 3 really, in my opinion, is just one of the greatest games ever made. I'd be very surprised if any other game honestly won. Now, I have talked to death about Baldur's Taint 3, whether it's the amazing character, story, world building, the excellent combat, just how varied your characters can be, how you actually do play a role, and just how many different ways you can go about everything. Baldur's Taint 3 really is just one of the greatest games ever made, no hyperbole. It's a fantastic game, and it was really hard for me to not place it at the top of this list. In fact, I went back and forth a few times, but... But I'm not here to totally discount all the other games from 2023. I've talked plenty about these games. I had a top 40 games from 2023. I played a ton of these. The only one I actually didn't play was Cocoon, which I heard was a solid puzzle game, but I just didn't get around to it. Alan Wake 2, 
excellent game, superb visuals. Baldur's Gate 3, we mentioned that one. Marvel Spider-Man 2, I've talked enough about that game, was part of its production. And then Tears of the Kingdom, an excellent follow-up to Breath of the Wild, fantastic game. But in terms of all the other games of 2023, we could be here all day, whether it was Diablo 4, Street Fighter 6, Mario Wonder, Bomb Rush, Final Fantasy 16, MK1, okay, maybe not MK1, Hi-Fi Rush. There's an endless amount of good games from 2023. 2023, in my opinion, is the best year in gaming since 2011. And I wouldn't be surprised if we look back and say that, yeah, 2023 was the best year in gaming of the 2020s. Like, it was a fantastic year. There was amazing games coming out, literally like left and right. Of course, there was a lot of bad shit that happened in 2023, more layoffs in the industry than ever before. But in terms of the video games that came out, it's pretty unparalleled. And again, it was really hard to not have Baldur's Gate 3 at the top of the list. Maybe it was just recency bias. I'm still flipping back and forth, honestly, but Baldur's Gate 3, fantastic game one of the greatest games ever made not even close if you like rpgs shoot even if you don't like rpgs or dnd i still think it's worth trying it's just so unbelievably good there's so much going for it and while it might have a little bit of a slow start because you suck ass at the beginning it so is worth it there's so many good payoffs and it really just never fails to amaze me how much amazing shit is going on with that game whether you're playing it on xbox ps5 or pc the game is absolutely worth getting and playing and loving it's also stupid long so set aside like 80 to 100 hours but very very worth it great game and here we have it we're finally here at my top game my number one is elden ring which won game of the year at the 26 annual dice awards which was for 2022 now elden ring I've talked about this game several times. It's Elden Ring. I was having a really hard time not having Elden Ring at the top of this list, and then I just went, you know, why am I trying so hard to not have it be Elden Ring? It's clearly Elden Ring. Elden Ring is one of the greatest video games ever made, and in my opinion, was just an easy 2022 win. Like, 2022 had some pretty stellar games, I'll give it that, but none of them were Elden Ring. Elden Ring is just so good, it doesn't matter if you've played through this game once or twice, or 12 times, or shit, I see comments about people saying they have over a thousand hours in this game, and I can totally see why. Elden Ring is just a fantastic game. It really builds on the Dark Souls franchise. And and is just a superb, stellar, almost perfect game. Seriously, there's so many bosses, the world is so big, there's some awesome dungeons, there's so many different ways to go about everything. Your character can be incredibly varied. I just love really everything about this game. It's one of the most epic, amazing journeys I've ever had with a video game. It's so good. Like, it really makes you question, how do video games get any better than Elden Ring? I don't know. If we ever get an Elden Ring 2, though, it's gonna go freaking nuts. We're still waiting on the DLC. What was Elden Ring up against? It was up against God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Vampire Survivors. Now, God of War Ragnarok, probably the second best game of 2022. Very good game. I was part of the game's production, and I very much like the story. Horizon Forbidden West, also another really good game, a good follow-up on Zero Dawn. Stray, haven't really played much of this one. One, but I've always heard very good things. I think it's pretty cute and cool at the very least. And then we have Vampire Survivors. I'm shocked this game was nominated because it was pretty underground, but I actually love Vampire Survivors. I've not like talked about it at all on the channel. I freaking love Vampire Survivors. What a fantastic game. I have I have so much fun with that game. When it comes to other games in 2022, there were some really good ones. Games like Tunic, there was Neon White, there was Mario Plus Rabbit, Sparks of Hope, there was Bayonetta 3, there was Seafood there was multiverses there was gran turismo 7 there's a lot of awesome games that came out in 2022 it was a pretty good year for games not as good as 2023 but elden ring is really my top game for this whole list and at the end of the day just remember all of this is just my list this is just my opinion i have elden ring at the top you very well might not have elden ring at the top you might have baldur's gate you might have orcarina of time shit you might have something totally random like halo 1 or something it really is all up to you these are all fantastic games i think every single game i talked about today was great and i can recommend all of them there were some interesting choices for sure and i didn't agree with a lot of them but these later ones i absolutely agreed with all of them really and i'm sure it feels like it but i was certainly running out of things to say by the end of this but really 
that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. This was a fun trip down memory lane, really just, you know, talking about a lot of these games that I've never talked about on the channel or games that I've talked plenty of times. It was great to just compare all the years, see which years were really great for gaming, see which ones were the bangers and which ones were kind of quiet. Either way, I had a really fun time making this video. Let me know down below what kind of videos you want to see me make next. Anything along these lines, maybe every year at this point. I don't know. Just let me know how you're feeling. Our secret code word today is going to be sharks as in my profile picture while well, it still is the shark so yeah that's our code word you're getting a nice heart from me hope everyone has a wonderful day evening holiday whatever the closest is to you i'll be watching the dice awards because i want to see if my prediction is correct and see if this list is outdated immediately either way though i think it's going to be a good one in 2024 i'm hopeful we're going to have another banger year so far it's been a banger year and i'm sure it's going to continue so i'll see you all in the next video Bye bye now